You're listening to Three Kitchens, a member of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown, community supported. Join your hosts, Aaron Walker, Sarah Somosunderam, and Heather Dyer to talk all about home cooking. This episode of Three Kitchens is brought to you by the Alberta Association of Optometrists, proudly celebrating a century of caring for Albertans. It happens. Many people don't call their optometrist first for urgent eye care when they need it. From spring cleaning mishaps to winter eye infections, if you or your family have an eye emergency, doctors of optometry are trained to diagnose, treat, and prescribe medications. No referral necessary. And just a reminder, Alberta Health coverage is available towards your urgent eye care appointment. To find an optometrist in your area, visit optometrist.ab.ca. The Alberta Association of Optometrists represents almost 800 doctors of optometry in over 80 communities across the province. Members are highly trained, regulated health professionals who provide primary eye health and vision care to Albertans. Learn more at optometrists.ab.ca. All right, now that we've done our vocal warm ups, uh, hello and welcome to this week's <laughs> episode of Three Kitchens. Uh, today I will be hosting you through some fun recipes and plural recipes because oh. I can't ever just take on one thing now. It seems I've got um, she's yeah. the overachiever of the bunch. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I, it's I'm just the over curious. I'm like, well, I could also look at this. <laughs> And then I read something and I'm like, ooh, I, I'm really like the puppy you have in your house. Shiny Sarah, things. Where I read something and I'm like, ooh, squirrel, ooh, yeah. rabbit, yeah. ooh, bird. <laughs> and then, yeah, I just I have no self-control. <laughs> well, we enjoy it because we get to eat all the things. Exactly. So. And then we don't I'm have not to make it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. So you're benefiting. If anything, you're just, you know, you're enabling me. You're enablers. Uh, oh, <laughs> We're happy to enable yes. this in your life. Okay. I'll check in with you first. You guys keep me under control. <laughs> <laughs> Since I can't run it past myself and make a good decision, I'll now be using you as my... Uh, <laughs> like a a cleaning thought. grout with a toothbrush? Is that what you mean? <laughs> uh, no, I don't enjoy that as much. I'll still enable that. That's No, no, that's good practice right there. Yeah. Don't you think? This is why I can't turn to you when I start yeah. getting obsessed with cleaning my house because you two are just as bad. Well, I don't necessarily do all the things, but I appreciate appreciate it uh, and I commend you for doing it (laughs) I don't necessarily here take a video of you doing it Sarah so that I can get the same satisfaction without the effort see (laughs) yes we'll talk about it together and we'll all feel good (laughs) Erin I I didn't tell you this but so uh, two days ago my vacuum cleaner um, stopped working and it was it was first thing because now I have a puppy so like there is no like not vacuuming every day so I have this handheld um lint remover oh oh no Uh, wait okay just I know (laughs) oh no no it's it's I wanted to wash my carpets so I had a handheld uh I have a handheld lint remover that is like reusable where it sort of goes back and forth and it has a lip on it and uh, when it goes back and forth, the, the lint collects at the back container, like the back part of this um, lint remover. And then you can open it at the end and sort of take off the lint and then keep using it. So can you tell me where you got this? Because I now need one upon that description. <laughs> I got it from Amazon and it's great because you can keep using it, right? Yeah, so exactly. uh, then I just like looked at my carpet and then I'm like, how am I going to wash it without... <laughs> So I went through the whole house and I vacuumed my carpet with a lint remover. My entire house. And I know, don't even <laughs> get me like The look I've, on Heather's face right now. No, I've heard this story before. Oh, I knew she it did was this, so I, most, I'm just enjoying it. The most satisfying, like every time I said it to someone, they had this horrified look like, what is wrong with you? But it was the most satisfying thing because when you open the back of it, Oh, all yeah. the like stuff came out and I'm like oh my god this is like and so now I feel like I'm obsessed and, and my husband has already asked me to like stand down stop picking <laughs> that up because now I just want to go like keep yeah. doing it right? yeah. yeah once you it's start like when, you can't yeah. stop that's right yeah the slippery it's like slope, when Sarah. I get the 
like the area rug and managed to flip it over mm. and like, cause you know, vacuuming only gets so much. Out That's of, right. Yeah. Yeah. If it's not too heavy and you can actually manage to like flip it upside down and then flip it back. And there's all this like dust and crumbs and whatever. And it's like, Oh, that's yeah, so, so awesome. Satisfying. Now I can just vacuum that up. I love yeah. it. So I lint removed everything and then I went to wash the carpets. And so you guys might have like sore legs from working out. I have sore arms. Yep. <laughs> and a this. clean house. I have sore legs and nothing else to show for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Heather. That's right. Oh, shit. <laughs> I love that you get your workout and yeah, another benefit, a benefit of a clean house. Anyway. Okay, Aaron, what are you cooking for us? What are you All right. cooking? All right. So there's these fruits that come into season around this time of year at the grocery store. And I like them. I think they're interesting tasting. They always kind of, I'm like, what can I do with them? What can I make with them? They're called persimmons. Mm -hmm. You guys know that I have a little bit of a persimmon, not obsession, but I'm always like, oh, it's persimmon season. What can I do with them now? It's so interesting because I don't think I've ever even tasted one. So I'm very curious. I haven't tasted one here, but I've tasted them in Asia. You know, I used to work at the grocery store and for a while we had a really good produce manager who, when we got new fruits in that were like dragon fruits or star fruits or some of that stuff that's seasonal that not a lot of people buy, he would slice it up and come around and serve it to us and talk about it. Like, obviously he was really into like the different produce and that's how I ended up getting exposed to it. That's how I was first Mm. exposed to a lychee nut. (laughs) (laughs) I think you called it lychee nut. Lychee nut. nut. Okay, yeah. a lychee nut. See, she's nut. half right. She's, she's getting. There. I'm. I'm getting learned. I always <laughs> called it a lychee. No, like, I know, but she went from lychee nut to lychee nut. See, so my automatic has been changed. See? I would still say lychee nut. Good, good. Okay, I'm there still you go. there. I'm still and I couldn't remember, it. so I went with what <laughs> came first, and I'm half learned. So, see, <laughs> you can't teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> anyway, so persimmons. Mm-hmm. are in season again now they are seasonal from october to december here in your grocery okay. stores you'll find them so let me give you a little bit of the research i've got my book out i took my notes mm-hmm. about that. the persimmon okay so <laughs> they are common to asia and the ones that we get in the grocery store here are japanese persimmons but they are cultivated and grown in california And so there are two types of uh, Japanese persimmons that we get or that we cultivate here. And one is called a hachia persimmon and one is called a fuyu persimmon. What did you say to me? No, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) They're fuyu. (laughs) They're not for me. They're fuyu. (laughs) Oh, fuyu. Okay. (laughs) So the hachia persimmon is a longer, more acorn-shaped persimmon. And I've taken pictures of these so that we can put Hmm. them up for everyone to see. Okay. But the Hichia persimmon is this more acorn-shaped one. And it is called the astringent variety. And so you cannot eat that persimmon until it is fully ripened. If you open it up when it is not soft or hard, apparently the tannins will just like make your mouth... Okay. Oh. Everyone describes it as like, don't ever open it up and eat it until it is as soft as a water balloon is what they describe. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Right? Really? Okay. okay. And then oh. the other type of persimmon, the one that's for you, uh, the fuyu, <laughs> the fuyu persimmon, uh, it looks more like a short squat tomato. That's the kind that I'm. That's the one I'm familiar with. Yeah, and those are the ones we more commonly see at our grocery store, and uh, those ones are the non-astringent ones. And you can eat them when they are, you know, not quite ripe yet, or up until they get to the water bag. Okay, it's just not really appetizing, (laughs) right? It's like a water balloon, squishy and exactly. And I was like, so you know, these, these fruits, I assumed like, oh, they're from far away. It's just Mm -hmm. that, you know, we've brought their seeds over. We're starting to cultivate them. That's why Mm -hmm. I'm looking for stuff to do with them. But no, I discovered that there are persimmons that are native to North America. Mm -hmm. They're like the Hachia persimmons. Their um, scientific name is Virginiana 
so they're common or they're found sort of in Virginia and the south oh, southern okay. United States. They produce a fruit that's very similar to the hachia persimmon. Okay. And they are um, so they're the astringent ones. You don't eat them until they're super soft. And apparently they do not ship or travel well at all. So we would never come across them. Oh, interesting. So now that you have some persimmon knowledge Background. under your yeah. belts, my parents went on a road trip on Route 66 mm-hmm. quite a few years ago. Cool. I think I remember telling you about this. My mom was getting rid of some cookbooks that she wasn't really using. And she gave me this book that is the Halltown Volunteer Fire Department Recipe Book Mm -hmm. from Halltown, Missouri. So I've been reading this book as if it's from Halltown, Missouri. I was just going to say, don't you have to say Missouri? I think think you got to have an accent for this. Anyway. (laughs) Sounds good. The so accent's got- coming out. Sarah, can you throw one in, please? We like Sarah's <laughs> accents too. It'll have to be. It'll have to be organic. Yeah, yeah I already just got to do it. You already said "foo you" to me, so <laughs> I'm a little offended right now. <laughs> <laughs> so let me see if I can redeem myself. So, going through this book, I came across a persimmon recipe. Mm. And I was like, why would you have a persimmon recipe in Missouri? Right. Because they have access to these local persimmons. Because if they don't travel well, like how far do they travel? You know, well, like I kind of thought that everything could be, tra- could be transported in some way. It has like a zero sh- shelf life. Like, oh. I think you essentially pick them once they're ripe. You don't even pick them oh, and let them ripen. I, see. I don't So think. you don't, okay, I get it. All right. So I think that they're in the Southern United States and commonly these persimmons are grown just as ornamental bushes because oh. they, you know, like people often won't even grow them or realize they're growing them for the fruit. It sounds like. Oh, I see. Because it's so fussy. People don't really know what to do with it. Mm. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. So I found this persimmon pudding recipe from oh. the Halltown, Missouri book. It is from... Shirley Hart of Halltown, Missouri. Hello, Shirley. Hi, Shirley. Shout out to Shirley. Thank you, Shirley. (laughs) I don't know. It's one of these like best of bridge books. Like it's all these recipes from these ladies in this place. I just, I think it's super cute. I've gone through and read a ton of it. It's, (laughs) it's really enjoyable. (laughs) Yeah. So I thought, oh, I'm going to use this persimmon recipe when we start getting persimmons in season. Ah, so I'm going to make a persimmon pudding and I'm going to make it with the fuyu. She said it again. Sorry, Sarah. Persimmons. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to make it also with the hachia persimmons. Oh, you are. So you were able to get the hachia. You can get hachia ones here, but they're not the ones. Virginian ones. Right. They are a Japanese variety. Right, right. Okay. Do you have both at this point? Oh, you do. do. Okay. (laughs) You've already. So I bought some Fuyu persimmons. I'm sorry, Mm -hmm. Sarah. (laughs) Just, I feel so terrible now. (laughs) So I bought some of the Fuyu persimmons a couple Mm -hmm. weeks ago. I put them in my basement to keep them cool and hope Ah, that they wouldn't over ripen on me. Right. And then. I went down to check them the other day and I was like, oh crap, oh. they're totally over ripened. They're water balloons. They're little water balloons, but they're not rotten. And as I read on this, I was like, oh, this is what I want. So, okay. hey, I treated my persimmons perfectly for the recipe I'm doing without knowing it. Yay. Okay, nice. Perfect. <laughs> and then when I was at the grocery store this week, just yesterday, I found the Hachia persimmons were already in stock. And I was like, yes, now I can make two puddings. <laughs> Mm. And what grocery store did you find these in? These are just at Superstore. Yeah, I saw some the other day and I was like, oh, now I know what those are. I've yeah. never eaten it, but I... So if you want, buy some of the short squat ones and cut them up and have them raw. They're delicious like that. Mm-hmm. Wash them up, slice them up. Yeah, they're good. Yum. But I'm going to wait until these hachia ones turn into little water bags. You then like squish out the juice, put it through a colander oh. or a sieve and okay. get the resulting thing. So what I learned doing some of my research is that the persimmon has a high amount of pectin in it. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. it can be used as a thickener or like it makes jams or jellies really well. And you know, that's, that's a great point because it is jam making season. So people like to go for the, the natural, natural way Mm -hmm. of, of doing pectin and not use those little sort of bags of pectin that we throw into jam that might be a great alternative so and it's perfect timing right yeah yeah 
And so, all right, so I've already taken my foo you persimmons and smushed out all the insides, put it through a colander, and I've got my jar of foo you persimmon pulp ready to go. Mm. What do you do with the juice? Uh, well, the stuff that I put through is like it turns into like it's like a thick, gooey. Oh, I thought oh. you were like getting the juice out and keeping the rest of it. Oh, I see. No, I'm getting out the pulp and just like getting the seed. It says put. So this recipe says put through colander one quart of persimmons should be two cups of pulp. It's not so, very descriptive okay. in terms of technique. It is not here. super descriptive. <laughs> surely you could have given me some better. Yeah, surely some of us need <laughs> a little more guidance here. I'm sure Shirley knows what she's doing because she's been doing it yeah. her whole life. I, yeah. I don't. And everyone who lives at Hull Town, they know how to deal with the persimmon. They know what to do, I guess. So based on some Googling and I figured out just get the persimmon pulp. Okay. So I've got all my pulp right. ready to right. go for the fuyu. I'll wait for my hachias to ripen. And then it's also supposed to be served with whipped cream. And I know that you don't do whipped cream, Heather. So I've also looked up a recipe for a coconut cream whipped cream. Yeah. Have you tried to make this before? No, I think we've talked no, about this before but where I say I just sounds good. I just don't do whipped cream. I do, I've never tried to make an alternative. I just skip it altogether. So I'm kind of excited about this. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to see if a substitute whipped cream that is vegan, dairy free will work mm. for us. And if we can do that. So yeah. Nice. Two types of persimmons, one pudding recipe. I just, I had a question. Now that you've extracted the fuyu pulp, where are you storing it? I just put it in a glass jar in the fridge. So I did this last night. I'm going to start working on the pudding today for this one. Oh, oh okay. So you're going to make it at separate times because you have, have to wait to. for the other one. Right, right, right. Yeah. They say you can ripen them quicker by putting them in a bag with a banana because oh, it's yeah, ripened yeah. in the same way. Anyway, I have them sitting on the counter right next to my bananas. They're already quite soft, the ones that I bought. Mm. So hopefully I'll be able to extract the pulp and uh, get that going pretty soon too. Mm. This is I, I'm excited about this because I have found most often a homemade pudding is a dairy product. And so I just, I don't do it. Right. I just, uh, even though I love an, a pudding, uh, it's something that I really, especially when it's like the texture is good and like, I love pudding. But it's not something I typically eat because of the dairy content of it. So, so this one has milk in it, but it's cooked and baked. I'm still going to eat it, Erin. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. Still gonna take Sarah my made probiotics. creme brulee one time and I that's totally, right. that's another thing I wouldn't have eaten. And I, I'm not turning it away. I'll tell you okay. that. And I do think <laughs> yeah. when it's cooked, it probably does. Helps. It's a nice color too, isn't it? A persimmon. It is. It is. And I have a theory on it that I need to do a little bit more research because I tasted some of my persimmon pulp. And I was mm -hmm. like, this reminds me of something. This reminds me of something. And I couldn't figure out what it was for a little while. And then it hit me. And I want to see if there's any sort of relationship to this other thing that I think it tastes like. What is it? Oh, I'm going to leave, leave us you hanging. on the hook. Uh, I'm going to leave you on the hook as to what I think it might be related to. And I'm going to do some mm. research uh, and see if I come back with any sort of um, conclusions or if I've just got some kind of crazy theory going on. I'll let you know either way. <laughs> nice. Well, I'm so curious. Can't wait. Foo you. <laughs> to make for you pudding. <laughs> I'm going to make some pudding for you. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Park Power, your friendly local utility providers in Alberta, offering internet, electricity, and natural gas with low rates, awesome service, and profit sharing with local charities. Winter is coming, and energy usage for all Albertans will be increasing. So now is a great time for listeners to look at their utility bills and ensure they are on the best plan. Albertans have a choice of utility providers. Park Power is happy to provide free, no-obligation comparisons. If you decide to switch providers, it's easy, and you can feel good knowing you are supporting a local business and helping to give back to our communities with your utility bill. Learn more at parkpower.ca. All right, well, welcome back. We have, well, you've consumed this persimmon, and I hold up quotation marks, pudding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about this persimmon pudding. I also just watched Austin Powers, so oh. the laser. 
going through my head right now but yeah this persimmon pudding Uh uh, (laughs) is it perhaps the sort of what i would think of as a british version of a pudding a bread pudding that's exactly what what i was thinking yeah that's what i would have called it is more like a bread pudding but not but But not not. it's like a tiramisu kind of texture is it i thought it was yeah oh so should i not see anything no no go ahead (laughs) i'm just when i made this i was okay so let's go through shirley's persimmon pudding that i made hey shirley here we go all right shirley I liked it, Shirley, so I don't know what these two are on about. But <laughs> Oh, nobody's saying we didn't like it. I'm not like saying it. it. Well, well, oh. my kids didn't. Well, well. Okay. <laughs> Let's start. Tell us what was in the recipe. So the persimmon pudding that I made had two cups of this um, persimmon pulp that I had strained through so that it didn't have any skin or any seeds in it. Okay. Uh, along with those two cups of pulp, I added eggs sugar, flour, baking powder, baking soda, salt, melted butter, milk, cinnamon, ginger, and nutmeg. Definitely tasted the cinnamon, ginger, and nutmeg. Yeah. Like it tasted very Christmassy. Or... So you mix this all together. Uh, she recommended I could bake this in a nine by nine baking dish. And then I look at my nine by nine baking dish and I was like, I don't think this is going to fit, but I was like, well, I'll try. Yeah, no. So then Mm. I had to pour it out of my nine by nine baking dish into the nine by 11 baking dish because there was no way it was going to fit in there. And then it baked in a 325 degree oven uh, for about an hour. Okay. More or less. I think I let it bake a little bit longer because I wasn't quite sure about the doneness. And as it was baking, I was like, this ain't looking like no pudding I ever made. So I don't know what's going on. And so how did you check for doneness, does it say? Until firm. Firm. Mm. Shirley mm-hmm. gave me one, two, three, four sentences to go off of here in this book. So okay. <laughs> come on, Cheryl. Sometimes people need a little more. I'm giving Shirley <laughs> hell here, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Shirley. It's not your fault. <sighs> So I brought it out of the oven and I was like, huh, interesting. Okay. It kind of looked like pumpkin pie without Mm -hmm. the crust. Right. Yeah. It kind of tasted like pumpkin pie. I feel like the persimmon was gone in this. I guess that's what I'm disappointed about. Right. I didn't really taste the persimmon. I thought like (laughs) it's going to be interesting to taste what this persimmony thing tastes like. You could have made this with like anything that you mashed up and made two cups of. You know, honestly, you probably could have made it without the persimmon. And it would just be sugar and butter and flour and all mixed up. And it would have made like a bread pudding, like you kind of described. It was kind of between a bread pudding and a moussey, like a thick mousse. Yeah, it's it's texture is different. Different. I think it was like like a very moist cake. Yeah. yeah. Like it was more of a cake. When, so when I yes. when you brought it to me and it was like in this little jar. Yeah. And the bottom yeah. layer was the pudding and the top layer was the whipped cream, again and, in quotations. Wow. Which uh we'll talk let's talk about that because that's amazing. Um and so it looked like to me it looked like pudding what I was kind of expecting because in the jar you can't really tell right I was trying to fool you guys with my plating absolutely <laughs> yeah because I thought oh okay here I go and I open it up and I put my spoon in and I'm like wait a second this texture is not pudding that I was like pudding to me is like soft even a pumpkin pie is more pudding like to me yes. than this was mm. true very mm-hmm. true it wasn't soft it was dense it was like cake in the bottom yes. of the jar yeah Oh, I'm so glad that my, I was like, how do I jar this? So it still looks like pudding. I was like, I want them to think it's going to be pudding. And then it's not, (laughs) (laughs) not pudding surprise. (laughs) That's why I texted you. And I was like, this is so good, but not what I was expecting. No, no, the texture wasn't at all like, and, and the taste, the taste was like, so I don't really, because I've had a lot of persimmons when I Mm -hmm. worked in Korea Right? Lots yeah. like they, it's a very big fruit. They love it there. And uh, I'm like, oh, why? Well, I would never have thought, like, I would never have guessed it. But I loved it. I mean, so I looked up the benefits to persimmon and it's like high in vitamin A, high in vitamin C. It's good for your heart. It's good for like a whole bunch of things. And so, I mean, why not? If the good stuff is in there and it tastes that good. Paid for by the persimmon producers of California. Um, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if you, me. Have, if, 
like if you could have put a like made like a sauce with the persimmon and yes. put it on oh like a drizzled it on, on top yeah it. like maybe you'd get the persimmon flavor oh. and then it's more of that bread pudding with oh. like a some kind of a sauce on top yeah. oh I think that would have been really good yeah. yeah so now I have to admit to my uh backing out on a commitment I made in the first part of this episode nobody's ever gonna blame you backing out of your like overachiever yeah. ideas <laughs> just me of us 40 lashes <laughs> except for eating <laughs> Um, oh dear. No. Uh, so after I made this gigantic amount of pudding, I was like, there ain't no way I'm making a second one. Because I told you guys no I was going to make one with the fuyu and another one with the hachias. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. My hachias are still sitting on the counter. So I might do, maybe I'll come back for a bonus episode yeah. and do something Ooh. different that tastes like persimmon. Because you can make like a persimmon jam. And I jam, think that would yeah, okay. totally be doable. I've just been overwhelmed by the amount of crap that's happening right now in my life. And I just can't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, guys. I, 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 don't be sorry. I think we're, we're all there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Anyway, things just kind of went to a stupid level in our house. And so I just didn't, I didn't yeah, get so it done. Just to be clear, I really <laughs> love the persimmon pudding. Whatever okay. that is, I really liked it, and yeah. I would like totally. Should I mean, was it hard to make? No, it was like mixing a pumpkin pie filling. I mean, okay. you just then. mix everything together in one bowl. You yeah. dump it into your pan, and then you bake it at a I low think it would be great as a time. pie as well. Don't you think? In the pastry? Yeah, it might be mm. too much pastry. Too much, I think. Yeah, too much of all pastry? the flour. What do you? Because yeah. it's too thick. Like it's too much, like a cake. It would be like cake in a pastry. And listen, Sarah, if you don't like the idea of pasta in the pie, which Aaron (laughs) and I keep keep dreaming about. (laughs) So you don't want pasta in your pie, but you want cake in your pie. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't quite think of it as cake, but I... I I'll make pasta in the pie and it will be pie. Oh, I'll make it for pie day. What is that? March, January, 314, March 14th. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Please make the pasta pie, if nothing else. I, I will make the pasta pie. What is March 14th? I don't understand the reference. Uh, pie, pie day. I'm oh, a nerd. pie day. Okay. And the number pie is 3.14. Oh, so gotcha, on March gotcha. 14th. Okay. <laughs> nerd alert. I think there is a pie. That's a real thing, isn't it? That is a real thing. You didn't thing, just make actually. that up. I think right. pie day coincides with P-I-E day. Makes sense. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's March 14th for all you out there. You non-math nerds. It's March 14th. <laughs> I'm a, I'm not a math nerd, but I, I love I love pie. There you go. So I will eat what you make. <laughs> I've, I'm setting up a lot of expectations, but, <laughs> but I probably, here's all the things I'm going to fail on next year, guys. Just start making a list now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But so would you make this again? Did you like it? I, I don't even... Like, I can't really read what you're saying. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling like I'm disappointed because I wanted it to be more persimmon like. Mm -hmm. I wanted something that made the persimmon like, oh, this is the star of the show. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yum. It's tasty. It's got these flavors. Um, I ended last episode on a cliffhanger because I was like, ooh, I think it tastes like something. I thought it tasted kind of like rose hips because I've made rose hip jam before. The Mm -hmm. flavor of the pulp and the the rosehip extract that I usually get are very similar, Mm -hmm. not related in any way, nothing. I looked up the like phenology to see if it was in the same plant as a rose. No. (laughs) I had guessed, we talked about it afterwards, but I had said, were you thinking rosehips? Because as you were talking about it, that's what I was thinking of. The color of it was super yeah, the color and the when I went to taste it, I was like, Oh, I'm thinking rose hips. And they're like, Nope. <laughs> There's no <laughs> nothing familiar here. Yeah. Um, to me it was like a spice cake. Yeah. Ah. So if anyone out there is wondering, what the hell are they even what did it taste like? It tastes like a very mild spice cake to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In fact, I think you could bump the spice up a little bit. Yeah. It certainly just tasted like cinnamon, ginger, and nutmeg and sugar. Yeah. It tasted yeah. Christmassy or, or fall, yeah. like those fall fall flavors, right? Like, a very um, mild yeah. spice cake, I would say. Yeah. That's yeah. a good... Not yeah, sweet. I still wouldn't even call it a 
quite a cake, but I see what you're saying. See, <laughs> I, I I know we this all is... can't figure out the texture. I know it's, it's come on. Yeah. We need to come up with our shaggy dough of persimmon. Yes, pudding. why didn't <laughs> Shirley? Shirley, where was your description? Three lines does not a recipe make. <laughs> come on. Where was she from again? Hull Town, Missouri. Oh, Missouri, right? Missouri. So maybe in maybe in Missouri. They all know that this is a pudding. This is what they call pudding. A pudding. A pudding. Pudding. (laughs) Missouri pudding. (laughs) Yeah, it was it was kind of mystery dessert. It was good mystery dessert. Oh it it was tasty. It definitely tasted good. I was just expecting something Mm -hmm. that was persimmony and pudding like. Right. And yeah. I feel like both of those things were eh, yes. fail. Right. Yes. But that's just because my definition and expectation was different than Shirley's definition, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> and the persimmons, as Sarah mentioned, has all these great health benefits. And when you bake it with sugar, oh, 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 I forgot to add in all of that, there was half a cup of melted butter, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, this wow. is by no means a low, low calorie, calorie dessert. <laughs> So don't fool yourself for a second. But that's okay because the persimmon helps with your heart. So whatever oh. you're clogging is unclogged <laughs> by the persimmons. <laughs> and see, I feel like of we life. need to asterisk this with uh, Sarah is not a medical professional. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't my advice great though? Yeah, if I like have, it. If you have <laughs> cardiac problems, please consult a doctor. <laughs> I don't think anyone's coming here for like actual nutrition advice no <laughs> oh, gosh I hope not. especially not to me <laughs> no I was gonna say when you said two cups of butter I was like that's why it's so it's half, quite rich half like a cup of like, butter not not oh, two, half, half a cup yeah it was two cups of something else milk two cups of rich milk so uh, rich I used rich half milk. and half oh Ooh. you used half and half okay okay Okay, so then what they she didn't even give an idea of what the fat content should have been for the milk. I take it. In no, no, no. Shirley <laughs> just said rich milk. Rich milk. What is that? Come mean? on, we know Shirley here. She's Come just on. Come on, Cheryl. This is just yeah. what Shirley does exactly. when those persimmons come on into town. <laughs> exactly. When when the persimmon tree ripens, Cheryl makes the pudding. And here it is. <laughs> <laughs> and then it says serve with cream. And I know that whipped cream is not going to be your favorite thing, Heather. So (laughs) I just Googled, ooh, do they have like a vegan whipped cream? This was pretty easy to make. Okay, please tell me because I thought that was, wow. Mm, Me (laughs) too. I really liked it. I thought it was delicious. Yeah, Totally a winner. You'll want a can of coconut milk or coconut cream. Now, which one did you use? I used a coconut cream, but I would also say that you could use a coconut milk with this what you have to do is separate the fat from the liquid you know sometimes you open up a can of coconut milk and all the liquid comes out like the Mm -hmm. coconut water and then you've got that creamy white fat from the coconut that's all you want but isn't that the cream like couldn't you just buy the cream you don't have to separate it do you the can of cream I bought was different than the can of cream I bought last time and they said that there can be a quite a bit of variability in what you get in the can of coconut cream or coconut milk. If you get one that consistently has the two parts in it, put it in the fridge overnight, open that up, scoop out the creamy part and discard or save that coconut water for later. Okay. However you want to use it. So what I did is I got this can of coconut cream that was pretty homogenous, but it was very thin. Mm -hmm. So I poured it into two jars and I put it in the fridge overnight and let it separate out Mm -hmm. and scooped off the thicker part. You add icing sugar and vanilla to it, mix it around and that's it. Oh, interesting. That's it. The key to it is don't over whisk. Ah, uh, okay. I was just like, what? You didn't whisk that? I'm like, oh, this is magic. It says don't over whisk it. So you just it's you just want to mix it to get or else it'll start to separate apparently. Right, right, right. Oh. And you know, <laughs> with my yes. luck, it would probably start separating right away if I got a whisk into it. So <laughs> it's, it's broken. Oh it's no, broken. it's broken again. No. <laughs> So I just, you mixed it really good as in like, as as soon as it came together, you stopped. There was no real like come together. You just like add all your stuff into the bowl with Mm. a hand whisk. Uh, I used my electric Mm. mixer. Oh, you did. Okay. And did it stiffen up when you whisked it? No, it's not going to stiffen or thicken in any way. So don't 
like whisk okay. it like you think it's going to was kind okay. of the recommendation with the recipe yeah that was really good clump really of good. coconut cream is pretty solid right, mm-hmm. right right the last time i bought coconut cream i think i got like a really solid it was really thick it mm-hmm. didn't have those two parts this Yeah, this one was different. I don't know. Maybe the brand I bought was different or something. Or I got a bum can. The recipe that I read said, sometimes you just get a coconut cream that isn't that thick. Mm. Try a different kind. Oh, interesting. Okay. So you can do it with whatever you find, but just get that really thick mass of coconut cream. And then, yeah. Mm. Oh, so good. good. Yeah. I liked that. I would do that anytime for I any think, whipped yeah, cream. Yeah, I would put that mm. on pumpkin pie. I would put that on any of the pies. Like, I think yeah. that is a, and I if think it's that's that simple. E- you can have whipped cream now, Heather, with your I pumpkin know. pie. Ah! I'm so excited. I loved it. And I love that I didn't have to worry about like, oh, I'll just have a little tiny taste of it. Like, yeah. it was like, eat it up. <laughs> it was so Why good. don't they have that at like coffee shops and stuff like, like Starbucks? Come on, Starbucks. You know, pumpkin lattes. <sighs> With dairy yes. free, free pumpkin lattes, it would be it so seems nice. like it would be an easy thing to just and it says it keeps I mean, in your fridge for like up to two weeks. Oh, like you could make a bunch of this and then I mean, yeah. just put it in your coffee every day. Uh, I wouldn't put that. <laughs> That is, I mean, you put an icing sugar in there, right? So I'm, yeah. you wouldn't want to eat this like all the time, but yeah. as a treat uh, on a dessert. Come on, the holidays are coming. You need exactly. Your, we need it's our winter problem. layers to keep ourselves warm. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just get some more fleece lined stretchy, stretchy pants, pants or mm-hmm. something. Yeah. Yes. Well, I thank you so much for looking and seeking out the dairy free option. I'm yeah, so happy. It's and I have I another it. jar of it in the fridge because yeah. she gave us extra for our families. I told my husband he could have half of that and I'm going to eat the other half. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. You're not even going to share even, with the kids. No, actually, one of them, I can't remember oh. which one, had a bite from my jar last yeah. night and was like, mm, nah. Yeah. He wasn't crazy about it. I think my kids will like it, but what we'll find out today, I was going to keep it for after school snack. Yeah, yeah. my kid called it like yucky cake or yucky oh. dessert or something. Mm. Both of them? I think only one ate it because the other one looked at it. After I had kind of like, I had this big pan of it and then I wanted to put it in the jar. So I like cut out these little circles and it, like it was kind of oh. all piggledy piggledy. It didn't right, look right, right. pretty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he like looked on the stove. He was like, mm, I think I'm okay. Thanks. Like, <laughs> How many persimmons did you use? Between six and eight of the Fuyu ones. So okay. those are the shorter flat ones. They're yeah. The short flat ones all together. With the coconut cream, it Mm -hmm. was yum. I would absolutely, I probably would make it. I'm definitely eating another big piece of that for breakfast after this. there you go. Mm -hmm. I thought it tasted great. It just was a a shock or it was unexpected. So, you know, sometimes it's fun to to go through these cookbooks that don't have pictures and don't tell you what to Mm -hmm. expect and only give you four sentences on how to make it and uh you get what you get well thanks shirley thank you shirley did she did you have a last name i'm just like are we gonna find her on social media hey cheryl (laughs) shirley hart from halltown missouri missouri well that was so fun And now for the fine print. We at Three Kitchens gratefully acknowledge we are telling these stories in the traditional territories of the Treaty 7 Nations in Southern Alberta and the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. We honor the rich tradition of oral storytellers on this land who have come before us. You can find pictures and recipe links on Instagram and Facebook at Three Kitchens Podcast. If you like and subscribe on your podcast player, that helps more people find us. That was not pudding. Definitely not.